Hello, Tom McGuire. So the new book, Dear NHS, Stories to Say Thank You, edited by Adam Kay. As soon as I saw this, as soon as I saw Adam Kay's name, I wanted to read this. I wanted to listen to it. Um, I loved his previous two. I've reviewed both of his previous two books. I listened to this one on Audible um, and it's basically a selection of kind of letters or I suppose monologues, experiences that these celebrities have had with the NHS in the past and they're basically kind of telling their story and they're sort of saying thank you. Thank you um, from the bottom of their heart for everything that was done for them basically. And it's really nice, it's really touching. Um, I, you know, I highly recommend it. It's definitely a bit of a kind of pick-me-up book I suppose particularly you know his other books are really funny but they're also quite depressing because they kind of give quite a real kind of flavour of how the NHS is struggling how doctors and nurses struggle and to me that's that's quite depressing really although you know I hold out hope for things improving and I'm sure many others others do as well but um, particularly with the recent stuff with Covid um, the extra pressure that people have been under and how we, we've seen it so clearly in the media and we see it with our the people we know, our friends, our family who work for the NHS. We see how, how difficult it is and it doesn't take much imagination to kind of sit down and think about that and think about what that actually means and what it could mean for our future and for our children and our children's children. So it is pretty concerning and this is this is a really nice book it's a real sort of pick me up there's some nice celebrities on there people who you maybe haven't thought about for a little while kind of with something to say others who you know old favorites from from years past um and i definitely had my favorites on there and i will give you some of those and the reasons why they're my favorite favorite so when i first started listening to this i was a little bit cynical because it was all very much kind of clapping hands, saying thank you very much to the NHS, um, which I'm obviously all for, don't get me wrong, you know, I'm not anti-NHS in any way, I would, and if I was, I'd never put myself on live on uh, on YouTube saying anything like that for fear of my life, and rightly so, really. But um, what I don't particularly like is how we are constantly kind of saying that the NHS are so wonderful and everyone who works for them are angel-like and they're superhuman they're not they're actually human beings and they actually need to live a certain quality of life the same as the rest of us they actually need to earn a decent wage a living wage so that they can have a decent quality of life and take breaks and go on holiday the same as anyone else basically and that seems to be something that we kind of forget can you see the kind of cynicism coming through sorry I'm going to be fairly kind of harsh in, in this review, I'm afraid. So if you haven't got the stomach for that, then you might want to watch something else. <laughs> but no, it's a fantastic book. I highly recommend it. So if you are going to scarp it, then, you know, go out and buy it. Go out, listen to it on Audible. I think a certain amount of the money goes to charity as well or goes to the NHS. So it's definitely worthwhile. And Adam Kay is brilliant, I think. and He's put it together really nicely. But yeah, I do think that we do far too much of this kind of... Um, making kind of martyrs of, of the NHS and the people who work there really and it's almost just like we all know it we all say it we all watch it in the media but we still carry on kind of making decisions and voting in certain ways and kind of having opinions that don't actually work to do anything to help improve things which really kind of irritates me and I know it irritates quite a lot of people um, I know I'm not the only one I know a lot of people feel strongly about it and I just feel like when are we going to do something about it? It's like brilliant standing up and clapping our hands and it's, it is lovely. Like We've got people down the road from us who have been killing themselves, working overtime and they stand outside and it's really nice to see them. Everyone's, everyone's around showing their appreciation to them and it is appreciation. It's lovely and it's emotional and it's sentimental and everything. That's great. But we kind of need to do more than this, basically. We need to find a way of kind of looking after the NHS so much better than we actually do. Whether we need some kind of forward-thinking entrepreneurial type to come in and do something or just decent politicians who kind of have maybe stronger principles or something, I, I don't have the answer, unfortunately, but we need something and we, we need more than just kind of standing up and saying how wonderful it is and giving awards and clapping hands and things. It doesn't count for enough. So I was a little bit frustrated when I heard the first sort of few potentially, I don't want to name any particular names because I'm, I'm, I might be wrong in the sense that the order of the way that the celebrities spoke isn't necessarily conducive to what I'm saying, but I think towards the beginning of the book, there was quite a lot of kind of, ah, yes, they're absolutely wonderful and they've done this and that, this and that for me and we love you and blah, blah, blah. And I was thinking, oh, this is great, this is great. 
And then luckily we did come to, there are quite a few people on here who actually tell it a bit more like it is. So a bit less kind of sycophantic sort of um, saying the right thing and pleasing people. Just actually there were some, maybe some older celebrities who are basically old enough to not really care anymore, who are just basically saying, you know, sorry, it's not good enough. Benjamin Zephaniah does a really nice bit on there. He's obviously fantastic, fantastic speaker, poetic, lovely to listen to. And he talks about the rebel idea of the NHS. And, and that was, I looked up afterwards. I, I, I knew the NHS was formed in 1948 because that's where my parents was born. My parents were born, sorry. But, um, and Aaron Bevan, I think he was called, Nye Bevan he was known as, who was the health minister for Labour at the time. He was the guy apparently who came up with it. Um, so absolutely fantastic. What a legend to come up with something like that, basically. And I think a few years later, they 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 had a, they put a small charge in place. I don't know if it was a Conservative MP or one of the other, I don't know, but someone put a, a charge in place, a nominal charge for certain dentistry, I think, and for something else. I can't remember. And he was quite upset by that. And he, he kind of, I think he left after that because he had this vision of it being completely free for all, which it, by and large it has been. Um, but yeah, it was really nice hearing Benjamin do, do his bit. It was a bit more, a bit more sort of to the point, really, and a bit more in line with my cynicism, really. Um, Stanley Tucci as well. So all American actor who's done loads of stuff, loads of supporting roles. He's a fantastic actor. He, I looked him up. He was actually in the Levi's Five Hundred One adverts back in the eight. Was it the eighties or nineties or pretty a while ago? And you see him there, and you hope you barely recognise him. But he's been in The Devil Wears Prada and things like that as well. And he talks about how being an American moving over here, you know, he's got nothing but appre appreciation and respect. And anyone who doesn't, basically, he says about these politicians, these rich people who say that, you know, healthcare should be paid for and stuff. It's like they need their heads and their hearts examining, frankly. And actually, if that's what they believe, then they need to pay for their own healthcare, basically. And yeah, so he's coming from that point of view of coming from somewhere like America, somewhere as supposedly great as America, where you have to have insurance and, you know, people are bankrupted, basically, when they get sick. And so he gives a really nice kind of realistic uh, point of view on it as well, which I appreciated. So I, I like that. Frankie Boyle never lets us down, does he? His his bit is brilliant. He's talking about his, his favourite friend, Jeremy Hunt, the guy that we all love as well. And, you know, I hear people standing up for Jeremy. And, oh, yeah, he's, you know, he's only doing what he can do. Shut up. The, the man doesn't need standing up for, for God's sake. He's a very wealthy Tory politician. He's absolutely fine. He's very successful. You know, he, he doesn't care whether people like him or not. You know, he <laughs> basically, and, and Frankie Ball makes the point that, you know, he comes from such privilege that he just cannot relate to working class people, middle class people. He can't relate to the sort of people that keep the NHS running, basically. Yet he made decisions that I'm not going to go into into the depths of it because I could go on all night and it's just boring. But, you know, Frankie Boyle kind of paints that picture very nicely in his usual sort of style, which I appreciated as well. It was nice to hear him. Um, yeah, and it's just I just think that's that's just far more powerful talking about the NHS rather than just saying, yes, thank you. You're wonderful. Actually, yeah, they are wonderful. Thank God for them, basically. But it's not any one individual, it's the whole system, isn't it? And the whole system isn't going to work unless people are paid properly and allowed to rest and recover. And anyway, you get the picture. Trevor McDonald as well, fantastic. His his sound quality was like he was being interviewed from miles away over the phone or something, which was quite cool. He's just a legend. He's just been around since forever. And he, he gave a really good bit. And he was saying about how angry he gets when he with this with the with the recent um virus and, and people dying with not enough PPE and stuff. And he gave he gave it both barrels really and said how ridiculous it is and horrible and it was good to hear that passion from him from him as well. So basically the more passionate people that kind of spoke up and said how angry it made them, I felt a lot better hearing that, rather than just the stand up, clap hands, make sure we don't offend anyone kind of approach of most of them. But it is lovely. It's, it's it's a really well put together book. I think it's really nice. It's really interesting. Definitely glad that I that I listened to it. I would highly recommend it. It's obviously not as good as his other two, because he. I mean, he hasn't. You know, he hasn't written it. He's just he's asked these people to get together and and give their pieces, and he's edited them together very nicely. And his first two books are just genius, aren't they? They're really really funny, really depressing at the same time, which is quite a feat. But this is just this is just nice. It's nice to hear the celebrities talking about it. It's nice to raise awareness again about the NHS. I hope more. I hope plenty of people listen to it. And I hope when people do listen to it, they appreciate the the 
harder hitting cynical celebrities more than the ones who just say how wonderful it is because i just think we're at risk if, we, if we're constantly just kind of saying ah yeah you know what no matter what happens no matter how we vote no matter what government's in no matter how hard we hit the nhs they're still just these invincible wonderful people who will still get up every single day they won't keep getting up every single day because they're not robots they can't keep they can't do the impossible basically and there will come a breaking point unfortunately and I'm going to rant and rant and rant about it because I feel really passionate about it. My Half my family work for the NHS. My family, there's loads of doctors in my family. I've worked with loads of nurses over the years in my business. And I've seen nurses who are just literally just beyond broken, basically. And even doctors nowadays, GPs, they're just literally just treated. I'm not going to go into details, but some of the way they get treated by management and, and things is just absolutely disgraceful, basically. I'm I'm kind of just disgusted by it really. A bit like old Sir Trevor. I met Sir Trevor once actually at St Michael's Mount years ago when I was younger. He said hello to me. I said hello back. It was nice. Felt rather nice, felt rather good. <laughs> just thought I'd name drop that one. But yeah, no. Really good book. I haven't got much more to say about it. You just gotta give it a listen or give it a read. I'd give it a listen actually. I think this is one that was worth listening to rather than read. It would be nice to, to read as well, to be fair. I always prefer reading a book, put your own kind of your own kind of imagery and imagination and, and voices to it. But it's nice to have the celebrities read it as well, I think. Right, my next review is going to be Michelle Obama's Becoming. I've read that recently as well. Fantastic book, and I will do that very soon. Please like and subscribe. I am going to be starting another channel soon um, for Maguire Total Coaching, which is a business that I've just started up. I'm going to be showing it through Facebook and Instagram. Um, I'm basically going to be getting personal development out to people, doing webinars, like I said previously, that I would be doing um, to try and help as many people as possible, to try and help people understand the difference between um, good personal development and bad personal development, and just trying to help people who are struggling, basically, because I think it's nice to try and give something back. You know, um, whether I'll benefit from it financially or not isn't really the point. I, I may do down the line, potentially, from getting out there a bit more I suppose but um the main thing is I just want to kind of pass my knowledge on really um and I quite like doing this in front of the camera it kind of makes me feel good it makes me feel like I'm pushing myself a little bit so yeah please like and subscribe and take care cheers